In this video, we focus on the two types of substances that exist, compounds and elements. As far as the matter diagram is concerned, we're focusing on the bottom left-hand corner, where we see that substances are either elements or compounds, and that elements can combine via chemical reactions to form compounds, and compounds can be broken down into their elemental constituents via chemical reactions. Just a reminder that a substance, formerly known as a pure substance, is a sample of matter that has a definite and distinct set of chemical and physical properties. Any two samples of matter that have identical sets of chemical and physical properties are generally said to be the same substance. Substances are homogeneous and uniform throughout. They have a uniform composition, meaning a subsample is representative of the whole. But unlike homogeneous mixtures, substances do not vary in composition from sample to sample. Finally, substances cannot be broken down or separated into other kinds of matter by simple physical processes such as filtration, distillation or centrifugation. As we noted earlier, there are two types of substances, elements and compounds. Elements are the simplest form of matter that exists and they cannot be broken down into other substances by physical or chemical means. Compounds consist of two or more elements combined in the same fixed proportions by mass and while they cannot be broken down to their constituent components by physical processes, they can be broken down into their constituent elements by chemical processes or chemical reactions. We'll go into a bit more detail with both elements and compounds, starting with elements. We've already noted that elements are the simplest form of matter that exists, and they cannot be broken down into other substances via chemical reactions. They are the building blocks of matter, since two or more elements can combine chemically to form literally millions and millions of different compounds. Elements are composed of a single type of atom, and that's the defining feature of an element, only one type of atom present. The diatomic gas is oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and chlorine, and the monatomic gas, helium, are examples of elements that are gases at room temperature and pressure. Mercury and bromine are examples of elements that are liquids at room temperature and pressure, and carbon, sulfur, sodium, gold, copper and chromium are elements that are solids at room temperature and pressure. Each element is assigned a name, a chemical symbol and an atomic number. This table shows the first 20 elements listed in order of increasing atomic number, starting with hydrogen at number 1 and calcium at number 20. As you can see, each element is given a number, a name and a chemical symbol. The chemical symbol is typically a single capital letter such as N for nitrogen, or a single capital letter followed by a lower case letter, as is the case for neon. In most cases, the chemical symbols tend to make sense with respect to their names. For example, Mg for magnesium and Al for aluminium. But we will see in other cases, Na for sodium and K for potassium actually come from Latin origins. Natrium for sodium and Kalium for potassium. We also have Cu for copper from the Latin cuprum and Au for gold from the Latin aurum. In this table, the elements are listed alphabetically and these are some of the more common elements that you will come across in your chemistry studies. Being substances, these elements have a unique set of physical and chemical properties and you can see some of the readily observable physical properties in these columns of the table. At present, there are about 118 known elements and 92 of them are naturally occurring, starting with hydrogen at atomic number 1 and going up to uranium with an atomic number of 92. At this stage of your chemistry studies, you should become very familiar with the first 20 or so elements in terms of their name, their number and their chemical symbols. The elements are also listed in a special way in the periodic table. Now we'll examine the structure, the function and the properties of the periodic table in more detail later. But for now it is useful to know that the elements are listed in 18 vertical columns, which we call groups, and 7 horizontal rows, which we call periods. Most importantly, each element within a group shares similar physical and chemical properties and the position of an element in the periodic table can be used to predict its chemical and physical properties. So for example, in group 11, we see the elements copper, silver and gold. And it's no coincidence that these are the three elements that have the highest electrical conductivity and all three of these elements are in the same vertical column or in the same group as they share similar physical and chemical properties. We'll now turn our attention to the second type of substances, compounds. 
As we have already noted, compounds are formed by two or more elements in which the elements are always combined in the same fixed proportions by mass. As such, the composition of a compound does not vary even though they are made up of different elements. Being a substance, they cannot be broken down into their constituent elements by simple physical processes, but they can be broken down by chemical reactions to form other substances. For example, water is a compound in which hydrogen and oxygen are always combined in the same fixed proportions, a 2 to 1 ratio of hydrogen to oxygen atoms. Water can be broken down into its constituent elements by chemical reaction. In this case, an electrochemical reaction, where an electric current results in the formation of oxygen gas at one electrode and hydrogen gas at the other electrode. And in this chemical reaction, two molecules of water are broken down to produce two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. So if we had an apparatus where we could collect the gases formed from these electrodes, we would see that we would actually collect twice as much hydrogen gas as we do oxygen gas, and that's in agreement with the decomposition reaction. Other examples of compounds include sodium chloride, NaCl, which is table salt, and it consists of the elements sodium and chlorine in a one-to-one -one ratio. Methane, CH4, which is the main component of natural gas, and consists of the elements of carbon and hydrogen in a one-to-four ratio. Ammonia, NH3, a compound used in household cleaning products, consists of the elements of nitrogen and hydrogen in a one-to-three ratio. Carbon dioxide, CO2, is a greenhouse gas and the gas that we exhale as part of respiration, and it consists of the elements of carbon and oxygen in a one-to-two ratio. And finally, calcium carbonate, CaCO3, otherwise known as limestone, it consists of the elements calcium, carbon, and oxygen in a one to one to three ratio. Now all of these compounds can ultimately be broken down into their constituent elements by chemical reactions. For the purposes of our studies, there are two main types of compounds that we need to consider, molecular compounds and ionic compounds. Ionic compounds include sodium chloride and calcium carbonate and contain metals bound with nonmetals or metals bound with groups of nonmetals and they are distinguished from molecular compounds which contain only non-metals bound to other non-metals and include examples such as water, methane, ammonia and carbon dioxide. We will deal with both molecular and ionic compounds in more detail in later videos.